right, I'm David Welch with Bloomberg News. I'm the Detroit Bureau Chief. This is Sandy Monroe, who has famously torn down the <laughs> Tesla Model 3 uh, to tell us that it was a very good car, could use a little bit of help on the engineering side. Today, we're looking at the all-new Model Y. Tesla calls it a crossover SUV. Maybe it's a wagon, maybe it's a hatchback. Sandy will walk us through that and the other attributes of the vehicle as well. But this is just out. They just started building it. So we're getting a, a sneak preview of this uh, before a lot of uh, inventory is even available. What we need to do is kind of like give you the base, the first uh, kick at the cat, as it were, for, uh, for what we spotted um, as, far as, uh, as far as the uh, fit and finish. Uh, we haven't obviously gotten into the technology underneath the hood yet or underneath the body, but, uh, but here we find that uh, Tesla still has a little bit of a problem with, um, with uh, fit and finish. So, and by fit and finish, we're talking about flushness and gap. Yeah, yeah the gaps between panels, right. between metal, the stuff that makes it look like a really well-crafted car. Right, so um, this is a red car, so it, initially when I looked at it, it looked fine, but, but the little stick doesn't lie. And when we start going in here, we look here, and we check a gap here versus the gap over there, and all the other different spots, we start to see that there's a little problem. And so for on the hood, when we look at uh, uh, front fenders, and, uh, and the absolute front. Uh, they're coming in at uh, uh, the, on one side, the left-hand side, one millimeter, and then the right-hand side's got three and a half millimeters. So that's a two and a half millimeter gap differential, and that's not so good. And then we've got uh, the hood to the fenders, three and a half on one side, four and a half on the other. That's that minus, sounds like uh, a minus one. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of like, uh, for us, that's a problem. When we look at the doors, though, <laughs> these doors are phenomenal. They're dead on. Uh, they did a really good job on the uh, on the doors, so uh, we're pretty pleased about with the way they've done this particular part of the car. And then if we go to the back, if we uh, look at the uh, the uh, hatch here, uh, we're starting to see that uh, the hatch uh, is a little bit off, uh, like one and one and a half millimeters. But then the one that's the really probably the worst is the, uh, the tail lamp to the body. So you're looking at this gap. I can see it. Which is to this gap. And you can see that I can, I can bury my, uh, my gap gauge on one side and not the other. So this one here is something that they're going to have to, they're going to have to really step the game up a bit. By the way, these gaps, consumers may or may not notice them. Does Most it speak to the overall quality of the vehicle? I personally, I think the, we've, we've looked at everything else and this is a far cry from what we saw on the Model 3. To much Model better. 3, this is much, much better. Um, but there's one thing here that I opened this up for because I really like this. I really like this flat floor. I love it. I mean, and I think that there's going to be a buying public that just going to, you know, you bring that heavy thing in and it's right at the right height. It's perfect for, it really for dropping is. stuff in. I like this feature a lot. I will tell you that um, for its size, it seems to be a lot more volume than what we were anticipating. Well, it's certainly roomy back here. I mean, if you're, you're going to Home Depot, you can... Yeah, you'll load that up. I don't think you're getting four by eight plywoods in there, but, uh, but I mean, most people, this is gonna be damn good for, for uh, bringing home the groceries, for sure. One of the other things that I, I really, um, uh, I really uh, have a problem with, I guess, is, um, is this. Um, take your hands and just rub it across the top and you're going to feel little teeny tiny pieces of dirt. I don't know, there's one there, there's one here, there's a whole bunch right there. The earth feel in the dirt um, uh, end of the paint or in the paint is kind of like two things that they need to kind of look at. Why is there dirt in the paint? I mean, it's, it's... Uh, it's hard to say. I'd, I've never been in their paint department, uh, and I'm not a painting expert anyway. But the bottom line, it doesn't sound like you've got major problems with no. just the external build and how this thing looks. And, and no, and actually, works. I like this, the look of this much, much better than I do the, uh, the Model 3. Um, and of all the luxury cars that, uh, or all the electric cars that we've seen so far, um, this is probably, uh, um, this is probably uh, my, my favorite. Well, actually... I really like the Jaguar look too, but but anyway, this is uh, kind of and then the BMW, uh, the one that they're bringing out, the i4. Did you see the pictures of that? I have, yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. That's a really cool looking car. 
Let's have a look inside and, and yeah, sure. give yeah. the uh, jump in. Give the viewers well, a. Well, actually, uh, try the rear seats first. You're a big guy, so uh, let's see what uh, see what you think about sitting in there. Oh, after you flip up the seats, they are heavy. That's a pretty and good room. Knees aren't touching the back, and, and I'm and almost I'm six two, it, so, so. Um, my uh, I, I need to have the seat back a fair amount, so. Uh, so you've got uh, if you've got plenty of room, then that's that's great. How, how tall? You're over six feet, right? Yeah, almost six two. So yeah, so there you go. That's very good room in the rear. So try the try the front. So dashboard is exactly the same. It is. It really now this doesn't scream luxury to me because it's it's very Spartan. I mean, you've got your yeah. wood grain here. The rest of it is just sort of gray yeah. with some brushed chrome type of uh, trim on it. Not gorgeous. But it does have that kind of clean Tesla high tech look, and, and, and the big touch screen, of course. Yeah, actually, I, I don't, I don't know if there's any difference between the interior on this and the Model Three. I was, I was told that there's lots of similarities because uh, I've been trying to stay away from any kind of press. Uh, I wanted, I wanted to be objective and uh, honest, and and I didn't want to be interview, inter, inter, uh Inner, inner feast or whatever with anybody else. I just wanted, I just wanted to uh, be influenced by what the car has to say. You have this, you've got two buttons here, and you've got locks and windows here, but everything else in the car is controlled right. here, whereas most vehicles, even if you can control everything here, they have a lot of redundant buttons down here for people who like them. If you're driving a Tesla, you've, you've got to get used to the touch screen. Right, and I don't know, I, when I first came out, I'd never seen something like a computer sitting in the middle of the dashboard before. Um, and then I thought about it and you know what? I had a, I used to have a Buick Riata, one of the very first ones that they brought out. And that had, that had a, uh, a what do you call it in the center? So what do you think? You want to drive? Yeah, let's go for a ride. As most people who are electric car buffs know, these things are really fast. Instant torque, goes straight to the wheels, and uh, I expect this to be no different because I've been in Model S and Model 3 cars before, and I've been in the ludicrous version of the Model S, and they really scream. So here we go. Pretty good pep, no complaints there. It actually starts to break down pretty nicely as you lay off the accelerator, and the brakes are pretty crisp. Gotta like it so far. Very comfortable seats, by the way, too. I gotta say so far, it's, uh, it's a pretty impressive car. Take a left turn here and see how it corners. Pretty nicely, although these cars are heavy and you can kind of feel that weight swinging to the left as you take that turn. You feel a little bit of rumble on these roads, and they're not terrible roads. You can kind of feel the weight bouncing around a bit. It's not super smooth, but pretty good ride. So far, pretty enjoyable. All right. So, what'd you think? Plenty fast, comfortable, Yeah. very yeah. smooth, although you can feel the weight on tight turns and you can feel the weight if you hit bad potholes, which Michigan has a yeah. lot of. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking, and you can tell me if I'm right about this, it's you know, the weight of that battery pack, you're going to feel some of the rumble. But overall, it's a really smooth ride and yeah. plenty fast. Well, I, uh, I thought this thing uh, handled really well. I liked it. It was like riding on rails. When we get the skin off, when we get the body off, we're going to be looking primarily at the motors and the inverter converters, okay, those two things. And then a lot of people are interested in the batteries, so we're going to be doing that. And you're going to rip this apart down right. to the last yeah, nut. Yeah, down to the last wire. nut, exactly the same as what we did for the Tesla Model 3, and then we're going to compare them side by side. So uh, the Model 3 is going to be upgraded a bit to, uh, to reflect the new costs of materials and stuff like that. So that shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't be too hard. And then we'll be costing this at $20, $20. So there'll be a comparison between the Model 3 and the Model Y in 2020 kind of fun. Do you think this is kind of right for that market for what people are buying? Crossover, this size crossover is one of the hot segments of the market right now. So far, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty impressed. All right. Yeah.